Hello everyone, this is Kablocker Schrodergol, and welcome back to SourceCast 2.0. Let us begin episode 6. So I'm glad we're finally getting back into a semi-consistent time frame for SourceCast. This is the 6th episode in 2 years, woo! And I apologize that we have not been doing this more often. I don't know if I mentioned it last episode, but if any of you want to make a SourceCast episode all on your own, go right on ahead. And then just send me a message telling me that you've made one, then send it to me and I will put it up for everyone to see and give you complete credit. So just throwing it out, out there, if you're interested in making a SourceCast episode, go right on ahead. Um, SourceCast should really be for everyone, not just for me, although I'm sure it seems like it sometimes. That being said, the current SourceCast crew is still looking for a rotation staff and special guest co-hosts. I thank everyone who has submitted their application so far. I've been going through them and I'm trying to get back to them as, as many as possible. If you have not yet submitted an application to join the crew, then just send me a private message or just uh, catch me on the shout box. I'm on the Balto Source shout box almost every single day, so you'll see me there and I sometimes hop onto the other uh, shout boxes as well, so that's where you'll be able to find me. As well as that, we're going to really try to make SourceCast a monthly thing. Again, if you remember correctly, that was what it was originally intended to be. I think we only ever hit that mark maybe twice where we had three episodes in a row that were month after month after month and really that's pretty much what it was originally meant to be but uh, there's just so much lack of news and stuff that we kind of figured you know what better just save SourceCast until there's enough news to make an episode that's worth people's time you don't want uh, one episode a month that says there's no news this week just feed the mailbag blah 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 you're going to want stuff that's awesome, and that's what SourceCast is meant to be. So let's start out this episode, and this will be a short episode, with Animation Source News. Um, first of all, I forgot to mention last last time, uh, this is an ongoing thing, it's been ongoing since the summer. There is a Balto fan dub in the works, uh, hosted by Fiverr the Prophet. You can find her on YouTube, her username is ClaireDeLuna09. If you need help figuring out how to spell that, it's pretty easy. It's just Claire de Luna 09. If you're familiar with Claire de Lune, it's just like that, except it's Luna instead of Lune, and then 09 at the end. Um, her videos are on YouTube of the fan ups that are done so far. So, anyway, uh, long story short, this great person is making a Balto fan dub, and she really needs voices. I think so far she's only made three videos, all of them with Balto and Jenna. Hi, I'm Balto. But um, that's just because I happen to have a good voice and I was willing. I'm really trying to promote this as much as possible. I think it's a great effort to uh, do something new with Balto because in the uh, almost 20 years now that it's been out, not much has um, been made out of it that is, you know, fresh content. So the eventual goal is to dub all three films, um, preferably with the same voices throughout all three for the main characters. and. So far, it's, it's turning out really well. Uh, I know that the first fan dub scene that was done, the uh, Northern Lights scene, was, uh, I think it's hit over a thousand views on YouTube, maybe even more by now. It's it's really a fun project, and if you're interested, then just contact either me or her. Uh, her animation source name is Fiverr the Prophet, all one word, F-I-V-E-R, the Prophet. So that's that. If you want more information, then check out the news article on it. And now moving on to the second piece of Animation Source news, I am reviving the Animation Source Choice Awards this year. Not to be confused with the Animation Source Awards, which honor members and not films. Uh, the Animation Source Awards tended to be uh, uh, a game of favorites. People tended to vote for themselves or for their friends, or they asked people to vote for them. And really, it got to be a popularity contest is all it was. and. It was used a lot and abused a lot, and it was no fun. No one really liked it except the people who won. And the people who won about half the time were very braggy about it, and the other half the time were annoyed that they won because they felt someone else deserved it. So that probably will never happen again. Um, the Animation Source Choice Awards honor the best in animation from the previous year. 
this will be the third year that this has happened and basically each year there's a bunch of animated films that come out right well uh, the first year we had this Rio was the eventual winner of the animation source choice award for best picture uh, last year was brave but there wasn't much there weren't many people who actually voted so I decided to disband it this year I decided you know what um, after talking with people and getting their opinion I decided to do it at least one more time Hopefully the response will be much bigger this year, um, and I'm hoping with SourceCast more people will be exposed to it so they'll be a bit more willing to vote and stuff. There are several categories, and each animated film from the previous year and other stuff like TV shows and animated video games get nominated within each award that they're eligible, and then you, the members of Animation Source, decide the winner. So, if enough of you felt that Monsters University was the best animated film of the previous year, then that'll eventually become Best Picture winner. If enough of you feel it was something else, like Cloudy of Me Chance Meatballs 2, or Despicable Me 2, or Frozen, uh, which has not come out yet, but you know, you have until then to see it, then you just vote for your favorite films in each of the categories that they belong, and you send in your vote on January 1st, and at the end of the month, I announce the winners. So that's how the Animation Source Choice Awards work. There's a section on it on the Animation Source Hub. If you need any more questions, again, just, just ask me. I am more than willing to answer any questions anybody asks. But just remember, guys, I'm not a mod. I don't think enough of you understand I am not a mod. I do not have mod powers. I'm a site builder on a few sites, and that is about it. If you ask me to deactivate an image or ban someone or unban someone or... Uh, just general mod stuff. I cannot help you. I would just forward you to another mod who can help. So just save yourselves the trouble and don't bother asking. The only exception I can think of is general animation source questions. You know, how does the site work? Stuff like that. You can ask me that. I'm more than happy to answer. Although I would prefer that you ask a mod instead. Uh, if you feel like there's something that can be added to one of the sites that I am a site builder on, then yeah, go ahead and ask me that. If, if you have a question on one of these uh, things that I'm doing, for example, the Choice Awards, then yeah, go right on ahead. If it's something that I'm involved in, then definitely. But if it's mod kind of stuff, then please don't bother. I cannot tell you how many times a month I get private messages from people, even some people that I've known for years who think that I'm a mod and are asking that they get their images activated a bit early or stuff like that. And I have no power over that. End rant. So moving on, I am going to revive something that SourceCast has not done in a long time. I am going to give a review of some animation source fan content. In the past, we have done fanfics for the most part, but given that I really don't think that there are any new fanfics out there that people are interested in, I decided to go ahead and review a fan art gallery. In this case, I'm going to be reviewing Bodhi's fan art on Baltosource. And I'm going to say this now. If you guys have any suggestions on what to on, on what I should review, go ahead and send them to the mailbag. I look at every single mailbag feedback submission. The only thing I ask is that you do not ask that we review your own stuff. Uh, if you have a friend, then go ahead and suggest that we review their stuff, but please not your own. Because uh, I just don't like selfish people. So anyway, so Bodhi was featured on Baltasaurus a week or two ago for her, his or her picture called Howl, Howling. Howling, yeah. Howl, like a dog howl. Wolf howl. There we go, wolf howl. Anyway, so she has really good art. I'm looking at this right now, and, and it's a picture, a drawing of Balto first howling in the white wolf scene. It looks almost like it's stylized but taken straight from the film. The body proportions are all correct. It's drawn very beautifully. I think it might have been colored with colored pencils and the colors just are wonderful. Shading is awesome. And there's even a little bit of breath coming out of his mouth because it's so cold outside. So I really do love it. And her first picture is a, a digital picture of Balto. It's, it doesn't look as much as from the movie as the other one does but it is just awesome and it, it looks really really good so I definitely recommend that you all check out Bodhi's Balto fan art gallery 
And again, if any of you have any suggestions for what we should review in the future, send it to the mailbag. Um, preferably on another source besides Source. I apologize that this episode is mostly Source, and I would really love to mix it up. All sources, not just the active ones, but especially any source but Source because that gets so much attention. So, let's move on, shall we? To the animation, movie, and TV news. The biggest one is My Little Pony Season 4 begins airing on The Hub on November 23. As of the time I record this, that's about two and a half weeks from now. But uh, it's never too late to jump on the My Little Pony bandwagon if you have not seen the show but are interested. Um, you can find every single episode almost anywhere. It's on YouTube, it's on iTunes, it's on Netflix. The only exception I can think of is Equestria Girls, the My Little Pony movie. I don't know where you're going to find that outside of iTunes and maybe YouTube if you're lucky. Uh, you might just have to go to the library and borrow it or um, if, if you don't mind dishing out some extra money, but you probably should anyway, just go out and buy the DVD. You can easily watch My Little Pony without seeing the movie and it would still be great. Uh, season 4, um, we don't know much about it except that we'll be seeing more character development, which is always a good thing. It'll be a 13 episode season just like season 3, which honestly I'm not a big fan of. I'm a big fan of long seasons where you just get more and more and more and there's almost never enough for you to sift through. But, you know, 13 episodes, half an hour each episode, more like 20 minutes, I guess. Um, that means that if you were to just pick up the season maybe 10 years down the line and watch it, you could probably watch it all in a day. I guess that's not that bad, but still. Um, that means less ponies and more commercials. Um, outside of My Little Pony, Frozen comes to theaters November 27. A bunch of trailers have been out and I finally actually saw one, so uh, it looks great. I'm not entirely sure what I think about the talking snowman, but I know I'm definitely going to go and see it. From here through the end of the year, there's a ton of great films coming out. Unfortunately, Frozen is the only animated film, um, which is unfortunate because usually we get at least a few animated films in the last two or three months of the year. We get Frozen now, and I think the only other big animated film that's coming out is Freebirds, which I know nothing about. If anybody has any comments on it, send it to the mailbag. <laughs> you know I was going to say that. Anyway, um, Frozen will be Disney's 53rd animated feature. Um, I'm not entirely sure what their next film is going to be after Frozen. Oh, uh, I take that back. It's going to be Big Hero 6. Oh, okay. Actually, Big Hero 6 is the film, an animated film coming out next November. It stars the Marvel characters of um, the team of the same name. Uh, since Disney owns Marvel, they can do that if they want. I'm really looking forward to seeing it because, you know, it's animated and it's Marvel, so... Uh, it's, 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 it's a big change. Usually superhero films that are based on comics are live action or animated, traditionally animated. This will be computer animated, which is awesome. So we'll see how that works. Also, there's a new Rio 2 trailer. I'm not going to tell you anything about it. If you want to watch it, go to Rio's source and watch it there. And last, and probably least for some of you, Pokemon X and Y has come out. Uh, and with it, the, two, the first two episodes of the XY series have been released. I will say this. Even if you don't like Pokemon, maybe you can appreciate the fact that the difference between the Japanese dub and the English dub was two days or around 40 hours. 40 hour difference between a Japanese dub and an English dub has never been done before in any anime series. Usually it's a period of several months to several years. Pokemon is the first uh, anime to ever sync up two different language dubs at the same time. So that's pretty cool. And if you think that Ash is still 10, wrong, he's 11 now. That's awesome, isn't it? Anyway, as well as that, on the same day as those two episodes aired, the n new Pokemon movie, Genesect and the Legend Awaken, aired in English as well. Uh, pretty much, Genesect is the new Legendary, but what might uh, surprise some of you is that it also stars Mewtwo. Not the same Mewtwo as the first one, this is a completely different Mewtwo. But still, if you're a fan of Mewtwo, this is definitely a film you should watch. It's a little darker than normal, but... It's still a great film. It's a big improvement over the Keldeo movie, I'll tell you that. Hello, my name is Skip. 
What I love about Animation Source is the fact that it has such an open and friendly atmosphere. The community within Animation Source, for the most part, is very welcoming, and the members, whether new or old, always seem to enjoy themselves. It's also a place where you can send art, fanfics, and other images and stuff, and get comments on it that make you feel better about yourself. You have fun. It's also a good place to make friends from around the world. I mean, you can't really do that with Facebook or MySpace or other sites like that. So basically, Animation Source has qualities to it that other sites don't. The thing I like about SourceCast is, is that SourceCasters have a great time getting together and talking about things that happen around all of Animation Source, and not just around one source, which is good. So we're not left out in the dark. I'm an Animation Source member, and I listen to SourceCast. So thank you all for getting through this far. Now we go on to, finally, the mailbag. We have the most responses ever. We have five things to go through, five. I'll put this in context. The most we've ever had is two. We have more than doubled that with this. So thank you in advance to everyone who sent in mailbag stuff. I'm gonna um, sift through this real quick, start from the oldest and go to the newest. Okay, the first one is from Blaze Tail. All she sent was uh, an email that said hi. So hi, Blaze Tail. Thank you for uh, sending in the uh, feedback to the mailbag. And also, uh, great job on working on Spirit Source. The next piece of mailbag is from johnny 2 B. I don't know his name now. Um, Gurfan something. Anyway, he writes, Hi guys, great work on SourceCast. Two questions this time. Last time you were talking about characters on the sources, whether they are related or not. If a person writes a fanfic about a certain Disney movie, such as Lion King, for example, then writes about a human character interacting with them, gives a story with them, etc., and it's their own character interacting with Disney characters, is it okay to post your human character related through the fanfic you wrote on the source page and say it's Lion King related, just to clarify the situation? Pretty much, uh, I guess we were talking about this a long time ago, but um, pretty much the, the rule is if it cannot realistically exist in that movie's universe, then you cannot make a character out of it. You're not going to see humans interacting with lions in The Lion King, and even if you did, they probably wouldn't be a friend of the lion, as I'm assuming you're talking about with this. If it were some human who was trying to hunt the lions, then that might be okay. Um, but you gotta keep in mind, you don't know what time period The Lion King is set in. It could be modern day, it could be several thousand years ago, when humans didn't have hunting technology to hunt down lions and stuff. That being said, you're probably just gonna have to ask a mod for clarification. Uh, that's just the safest route to go. And the second question was, Next, I don't know if you remember, but last time we spoke, you mentioned that Tailspin Volume 3 would be out soon. Did you know the exact date it would be coming out? Thank you. Actually, Tailspin Volume 3 is already out. If you want it, you probably can find it on Amazon and eBay by now. That's the short answer of it. How many of you wanted to uh, see Tailspin Volume 3? So exciting, isn't it? The third mailbag question comes from Batman, not to be confused with THE Batman, this is just Batman. He sent in the question, I'm just wondering if I could be part of SourceCast. I was thinking of joining a few years ago, but I didn't have the right equipment, so I'm thinking of joining now. I mean, nothing big, just any small job that needs filling. In fact, I was thinking of keeping an eye on the chat while you guys are doing a live stream as a moderator or admin. I do report anything I see on the lesser known sources, like Lady of the Tramp or How to Train Your Dragon source, because mods don't really come on there often, and they may miss some content that needs removed, and I'm available almost 24-7 except on school days, and just need to PM or email me and I'll be there in a few minutes. Pretty much that, that that's great. I, I would love to have you on the team, and really, the uh, source cast is more than just a bunch of people talking. There's a lot that goes into it. Uh, for example, I probably record an hour's worth of audio for every half hour that actually makes it onto there. And when there are several people talking for a show, oftentimes you can get off topic. And I think that there have been several episodes where we talked for two hours and recorded five minutes worth of audio. Editors are needed to edit all that down, decide what's good, what's bad, what is needless, and make sure that we uh, get everything on track, etc. So editors, we, we, we could always use editors. Let's just put it that way. I have been, I joined as the editor and within an episode of me joining, I became a host 
and within a few more episodes I became the guy in charge. So if you think that editing is a small thing, just remember that's what I started out with and that's where I and that's how I got where I am now. There, there are plenty of things besides editors. As Batman said already, there are positions where you can be the moderator when we do live chats and stuff. I don't know when we're going to do another one of those again, but I would love to eventually, hopefully sometime soon. Honestly, the amount of stuff that people can do is countless. We are still looking for transcribers to transcribe episodes, write down all of our words, and then submit it to the site because a bunch of people want to listen to SourceCast, but English isn't their first language. They can understand written English, but not spoken English. So one of our long-term goals is to transcribe stuff um, so that people who can read it but not speak it can still enjoy the show. It's something that hasn't been touched in at, I think, maybe a year or two, a long time, but it is still an option if you want to help out with SourceCast, um, but you don't know what else to do. And there are countless other small jobs that you can do. If you don't want to be a host, but you still want to help out, then just think of something you can do to help, and that would be great. But to answer your question, Batman, I think I've already told you you are more than welcome to do that. It's just going to be maybe a little while, hopefully not too long, maybe two episodes before we do another live stream episode, so be on the lookout for that. And speaking of which, um, this is a mailbag message from username Timba. I am willing to help in any possible way. I can talk, I can't really host. I do great with a partner, and I game, if that means anything. I can't draw for my life, but I would love to help. Again, I welcome you um, to help out in any way you can. I think it'd be great for you to be a guest co-host sometime, if you're willing. Other than that, if you can think of any uh, non-hosting duties you can do, then just mention it and we'll see if we can't hook you up. And last but not least, this is from Daydreamer. Hey, Dee Dee. Hi, it's Daydreamer, Dee Dee. I was just thinking I'd like to help out with SourceCast from time to time. And again, we'd love to have that. So that's great. Five mailbag responses from five different people, and honestly, I am very happy with all of you. Oh, there is one other uh, thing, is that SourceCast does have an email, and if we could have somebody who could manage the email, that would be great. Other than that, I think that that is it. We are done with SourceCast 2.0 Episode 6. I'm sorry that it was not to last, but hopefully next time we'll have two people talking and not just one. If you want to help out with future episodes, contact me or send feedback to the mailbag. Uh, you just heard those three people, Dee Dee, Timba, and Batman, who want to help, and I say they are more than welcome to. And you are too if you want. There's a lot of stuff that goes into making SourceCast work, and if you want to help, then just say so. If you have any more suggestions for future SourceCast episodes, send it to the mailbag. And don't forget to join the Balto Fan Dub if you haven't already. Again, contact Fiverr the Prophet on Balto Source or Claire Deluna09 on YouTube. Or if that's just too much for you to try to figure out, just send me a private message and I'll hook you up. So yeah, I guess that's about it. Thank you everyone for um, bearing with us for so long. I apologize that, you know, episodes are so sporadic. Hopefully in the future we will have more hosts and better stuff. Don't forget the the future is always brighter than the past. Thank you everyone. This is called Walker Shirtigal. Reach for the light. You might touch the sky.